Hi everyone, this is Sky. I'm just coming on to make some quick notes for you about the full moon in Gemini coming up on December 19th. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm coming to you very quickly on my smartphone today. I know you all like these impromptu videos, so um, if the video resonates, be sure to subscribe and um, give the video a thumbs up if it resonates for you. But um, yeah, going at this pretty cold, um, let's talk about full moon in Gemini. Um, firstly, uh, be sure to come to the live premiere for the 2022 Year Ahead forecast on December 17th. If you're seeing this video before then, just I'm giving as many reminders as I can because I'm hoping um, for a nice turnout. So, um, full moon in Gemini. As I'm filming this, it's uh, December the 14th, and um, I'm feeling that there is a height of uh, tricky kind of energy that is ending and it's not really coming past December 19th. This full moon in Gemini will certainly be the last kind of big dose, I think, of the uh, North Node in Gemini, South Node in Sagittarius uh, paradigm that we've been in um, for 2021. So this would definitely be kind of a uh, transition point from the 2021 year cycle to 2022. And I think that December 19th itself is going to be a really, really uh, poignant, emotionally based opportunity to understand your thought process, to understand your um, quick decision making, your impulses, your um, mercurial side of you. So the planet Mercury is activated um, as it is the ruler of Gemini whenever the full moon is in Gem whenever the full moon is there. Um, and it makes uh, the uh, tendency for us to question our thinking and for us to really uh, not just think, but to think about how we think. So it's a very macro kind of thought process that I think a lot of us will be in here. And honestly, it's really going to be a nice little um, point to gather your thoughts. Okay, so the main concept that I want you to take away from this December 19th uh, time period is um, thought gathering, okay? Uh, really starting to contain or uh, pull together certain thoughts and understand why they're uh, there. If you're having thoughts that don't necessarily evoke uh, your material reality, like for example, um, any forms of like nine of swords energy or feeling of paranoia or feeling of unsureness, it would be highly likely that on December 19th, you might have that at a climax and you might also be able to see it for what it is. There's also the likelihood of something being brought to your attention on December 19th or that um, on the coming moon cycle, so from about December 19th until January 19th, it's very likely that you will have a big summation or a big conclusion on um, expectation versus turnout. So this full moon in Gemini is going to be um, raising a lot of questions about how we preemptively moved into certain uh, terrains, certain territories. And it's also going to very much show us if we are overthinking things. Okay, this full moon in Gemini is coming right on the cusp of Sagittarius and Capricorn. So all of a sudden, we're going to kind of go from this very conceptual, very philosophical, thought-oriented paradigm and um, over the next moon cycle, things are going to suddenly get very real. And it's going to be more like, okay, this is what I have. Um, it's going to be much less um, in the mind once we get into 2022 than it has been for most of 2021. And there's going to be a very, I think, again, poignant keeps coming to mind, a very poignant kind of tip of the iceberg experience for a lot of people. Again, these parables are very hyperbolic, I understand, but this is the energy that we're in where it's almost like only very kind of nebulous and far-reaching examples can really sum up this energy. But there could be a feeling of like, okay, I now understand the root of a problem because I've just now gotten to the tip of the iceberg and I've just now kind of wondered upon my calling, okay, there's a great example to emotion, or there's a great um, ability to emotionally perceive one's calling or one's purpose during this full moon, during this December 19th full moon. And also, whether or not we're going about these purposes or these callings in straightforward, direct ways or in tricky, indirect ways. So this is probably the main thing I would want you to think about during this time, um, is how can I in the safest, most straightforward, most direct, again, safest way, 
pursue my calling? Um, how can I start to simplify things? How can I start to uh, embrace a larger degree of transparency and less complexity? Because the thing is, is that the 2022 year cycle, as you'll see um, in the 2022 year ahead video uh, coming on Friday, um, a lot of that year has such a kind of mosaic of complexity, okay? There are a lot of different ways that we can interpret the experiences that we're about to have in 2022. These are not going to actually be super straightforward, super clear cut things that we're going through in 2022. These are gonna be things that we, if we choose, we can see from any perspective. We can have kind of this kaleidoscope of life experience and this new and this full moon in Gemini that we're having on December 19th is going to start the uh, momentum setting for what that's like. Um, for some people, because of the Neptunian influence that we're already under, but which will increase in 2022, there's kind of a fun house feeling like things in mirrors not really looking like they are. There are a lot of kind of tricky things. And that is a large part of a Gemini energy. That's a large part of Pisces, Neptune energy. Any of the mutable signs can be that way, but especially those two. And um, we have to emotionally come to terms, I think, in this full moon with what we want to be a straightforward experience in our life and what we don't. I think that a lot of times people will complicate things inherently because there's a big fear of insignificance, you know? So sometimes complexity can be uh, misconstrued as significance, okay? So uh, what you can get with this combination, this is the difficult side of the oncoming energy, is um, insignificant complexities. Why the heck are some of these things so complex? Why the heck aren't we giving ourselves the answers to some of this stuff? Why are we complicating some things the way that we are is a great way to think about right now. And if you've already kind of been on a quest for um, minimalism or some type of simplification over 2021, you'll inherently kind of do better, but I kind of feel like nobody is really totally out of the woods with this, you know? Um, I would just pay such close attention to, yes, the insignificant complexities with this moon. And then also, I suppose, the significant simplicities, which I suppose would be the antonym of that, um, also, and I would go more towards those things, these um, significant, simplistic things, because what's beautiful and what can really make a nice composition of many moving parts in 2022 is when these significant, simple things are given a kind of complex tone about them and it creates harmony, okay? Though I will also say that the insignificant complexities, the things in your life which are uh, unreasonably overcomplicated, um, you know, those things are going to become incomprehensible in 2022, not solvable, not even touchable, because they will get more complicated as well. And the context of this within December 19th, within the full moon in Gemini, is really one of knowing the answers, okay, knowing why you made something so complicated, knowing why you didn't want it to be that way, knowing why certain things are a part of your life. There's an incredible ability to know on December 19th, really until uh, like middle January, as we have the nodes in their final moment, as we have the moon cycle attached to them, as the sun just obviously passed by as well. Um, the life force energy and the emotional energy are invested into these conceptual knowings, into these um, sort of, I guess, mental givers of significance, like why we attach significance to certain things. These are intangible kinds of human investments, right? Anything in that area, I know this is very arbitrary, <laughs> anything in that area is where your emotional compass can guide you through on December 19th. Um, I would also really check back in with yourself. Yeah, this is this is important. I would check back in with yourself about the uh, multiplicities in your life. What do I mean by that? So um, double lives, um, working multiple jobs, um, dating multiple people, uh, maintaining more relationships than possible. Anything that has this sort of essence of multitude or... Uh, multiples. Again, Gemini obviously is the archetype of the twins or anything more like triplets, quadruplets, any type of doubling or multiplicity of one soul energy. 
Um, so that is the energy of Gemini. And what we can see at a collective level is basically a fragmentation of some of our own uh, soul life force investments. So you can start to see at a level of purpose, like, um, okay, so I've seen, I've wanted to have a music career. I've wanted to become like a musician. You can actually see that fragment or uh, bifurcate into like two different goals and neither of them are music, but the energy is like redistributed and reinvested. So like the energy that you wanted for your music career is now ch channeling through like um, some type of corporate career and then some type of like side hustle at the same time. But it's not actually directly giving you what you need because you're like antiquating or, or equating this uh, investment of energy with like what you wanted for your music career. So this is just a good stream of consciousness dialogue about what can happen always when you have North Node and Gemini, South Node and Sagittarius. We kind of want to do everything. We don't want to release anything. We don't want to say no to anything. We don't want to experience any kind of deprivation. So yes, weight gain is very easy right now. Um, also, big spending, um, also promotions and more money. That's very possible too. And it's likely to just have really a wealth of thoughts or so many racing, racing thoughts, but that's going to change honestly by like the end of January when we really condense and recontain and that containing and condensing is going to happen. And the good thing about this full moon in Gemini is we can do some decision-making about what that looks like. I will tell you, and this is an important thing. It's a, one of the reasons I'm making this video is that past this moon cycle, it's not just past December 19th, but past the entire moon cycle of this Gemini full moon moon cycle. So honestly, you know, it was um, obviously the new moon in Sagittarius where we had that solar eclipse. So that started on December 4th. So by around January 4th, that full moon cycle, there's going to be a distinctive gathering of oneself that happens. There's going to be an instinctive uh, locking or finalizing, concluding on certain things, because I think a lot of us are like, I just can't afford to overthink all this stuff anymore. I can't afford this mental back and forth. I can't afford this nine of swords experience. It's not healthy. And a lot of us are then going to shift over into a little bit more maybe um, predictable kind of stamped, finished, done things in our lives and just kind of coast through that and maybe pursue new things while having that. So I'm seeing that for a lot of people. But um, to not lose my main point here, um, between December 19th and January 4th, you have almost like infinite levels of decision-making power, infinite levels of concept, concept crafting power, um, in, uh, infinite levels of structural conceptual power. And the most incredible way to channel this energy, I think, is to be a bit of a concept artist right now, like, um, you know, being able to create new concepts for yourself. And then upon the creation of these concepts, probably between the time of like January 4th and then like the next moon cycle, so around February 4th, once the nodes start to shift over and we get out of the Venus retrograde and towards all planets direct again, I see material implement, implementation needed by that time. So you can kind of see the, the map, okay? You can kind of see uh, through so many synchronicities what you do and don't need. And you can see a map of like, okay, concept meets pen to paper, meets implementation, meets pending period, meets results through all planets direct. Um, so uh, that's a really wonderful archetypal way to be moving through your life right now. Um, if you're having maybe an instinct or a thought to just act really quickly right now and to not conceptualize like here on this full moon, December 19th, Venus retrograde, and to just like change your life immediately, it could work for some people, but it might also be better to... Um, conceptualize at this point in time. And I know that honestly, a lot of us are really tired of the mental minefield that 2021 has been with North Node and Gemini. It's not a bad placement. It's not a bad transit. It just really puts so much energy into the conscious part of the brain, into the um, choiceful thought making. So the thoughts we choose to think, not just the uh, impulsive instinctual thoughts but you know what when we sit down or when we lay down to go to sleep at night and the thoughts that we're choosing to think at that time that's very much evocative of north node and gemini energy and that might be a really good way to uh, walk out of this uh, nodal axis as well 
Um, pay attention to what you're thinking about before you go to sleep. Uh, pay attention to what you think about when you're waking up. Um, pay attention to, you know, when you're driving, like the things you choose to think about when you start to idle is a great way to kind of know how well you're channeling this energy. If these thoughts are frightening or if these thoughts are like paranoid or fearful or, um, you know, bringing up all kinds of unsolvable, unresolvable issues, then we might need to really work on physically channeling the energy or um, conceptually solving it or solving these problems once and for all, you know. And I would also take that mindset right now, only at the level of mindset and then waiting until the calendar new year to really start implementing. But the, a mindset of like solving things once and for all right now is good. If you were to set, sit down with like grid paper or like blueprint your life or something, and you're like, okay, thinking in the context of solving things once and for all, what do I draw out here? It's incredible. It's incredible motivational stuff, isn't it? What incredible motivational energy it is. However, some things that actually have been brought into life or brought into action or materialized in the 2021 year cycle are kind of like not as tough as they will be in 2022 because of the mind part. But nonetheless, it's great to um, conceptualize still. Um, but once we get firmly into 2022 and uh, past the equinox especially, so past uh, March, and into April, we're not going to have the same type of conceptual want or drive. And there's gonna be a lot more of a desire for like real material stepping into path types of things, okay? Yeah, so anyway, everyone, I'm gonna go ahead and conclude the video on that note. I hope you enjoyed this highly arbitrary chat about the full moon in Gemini. It is a highly arbitrary placement. Um, so, uh, I hope you have a wonderful experience of it. I just wanted to come on and update you uh, quickly about it. Again, hit that subscribe button below if you're new, turn on the bell notifications, and I hope to see you this Friday, December 17th at 6 p.m. Pacific time for the live premiere of the 2022 Year Ahead Forecast with all 12 signs being talked about. It's going to be a wonderful community event. If you're watching this video after that time period, um, I will make sure to update this video with links for um, that video as well so you can go and check it out. Anyway, everyone, have a wonderful um, final little bit of 2021 here. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.